Welcome back to another wonderful edition of the Wizard Shop. Today I'm going to show you guys three really cool tools and how to use them. They're tools that I have in my shop that I don't use a whole lot, but when I do use them there is no other tool or substitute to properly and quickly get the answers that I need. We're going to start with this one right after this. This is a snap-on smoke machine. It's an EEL D100A. I've had it for several years. This one wasn't given to me. We're just going to go through how to hook it up, what it can do, and why it's so valuable and time-saving. So, the first thing you have to do to hook this up is you have to hook it to the car battery. It comes with the positive and negative clamps. Hook it to the battery. and we see a little light came on, a green light. Now I've shown this in some of my videos in the past and just quickly showed where a leak was, but I didn't show how it's used, what's needed to operate it, and the various other uses that can be used with this tool. So we've got power hooked up. The next thing it needs is shop air, which is right here. And it plugs in the back on the handle right here. You guys can see the little air port there. Now, this is like 100 PSI of shop air. You're not going to be putting 100 PSI into the car. It has a regulator valve built inside of it that puts out a variable amount, half PSI, one PSI. It's not a whole lot. But once we turn this on, there's oil inside of this. It's basically like baby oil or mineral oil is typically what's used. But there's a device inside of here that heats up the oil and mixes it with air. And as you can see, it starts pumping smoke out. Kind of like a party favor, a fog machine. I'll go ahead and turn that off. So what you do with this is fill up, yeah, it's smoky around here, guys. You fill up a chamber, an intake manifold, a fuel tank, an EVAP system, various different things. You could really use it to detect leaks in anything, but I typically use it for intake gasket leaks, EVAP system leaks, or a vacuum, any kind of vacuum leak. The next thing I'm going to show you is the port that's on most modern cars for the EVAP system. Right here is a picture of a basic EVAP system and what it does. And basically all it is, is a couple of hard plastic pipes, or sometimes metal, that go between the intake manifold, back to the fuel tank, and back up to a charcoal canister or something of that nature. The only reason an EVAP system exists is to contain and use up vapors out of your fuel tank. You kind of think of yourself back in 1962 at a Kmart parking lot. It's hot, it's 100 degrees out, and you're walking through the parking lot. What do you smell? Gas vapors. All those old cars, gas, I mean, they just stink. There was no EVAP system. All those vapors just went out into the air. That's not allowed. That's, that violates government rules. So they contain those vapors in a canister, and when you start your engine, it sucks those back up and burns them. So when that leaks, the computer knows. It does self-test. It checks that system. When there's a tiniest little pinhole, the check engine light will come on. EVAP small leak, EVAP medium leak, large leak. There's different levels. When that light comes on, that's where this comes in handy. Let's move over to the EVAP test port. Let me show it to you. This is Crazy D's Lincoln Navigator that he got for, for free from Hoovy. That's what we're using today. But as you can see, there's a little green cap that is strictly for your EVAP system. Now sometimes you'll see a little tag on these that says EVAP test port no, do not exceed 1 PSI. And it doesn't say it on this one, but you don't have to worry about it on this machine. It doesn't exceed that. It, it's like half PSI, like I talked about. Now inside of this is a little Schrader valve, like on a bicycle 
inner tube, a little valve inside of there, and you have to use a little tool to get it out. There, there are special fittings that will just screw on and use what's there, but I typically take that valve out. And here's the key thing to remember, and I'm going to tell it to you three times because it will cause damage. Unlike a typical bicycle inner tube or car Schrader valve for your tire, the threads on this valve are reverse backwards thread or left hand thread. So say that with me three times. Left hand thread, left hand thread, left hand thread. I'm, I'm saying that because I've, I've stripped them out before when I was in my younger days. You turn it the wrong way, the, the, the way you're not used to, to loosen it up. And there we go. Set that aside. I have this little elbow that I use just for these. It fits right over the port. Just like so. And then you turn on the smoke machine. And you wait for a little bit and let it fill up the system. All the pipes and hoses and, and your gas tank. It's going to fill your gas tank up with smoke. It's inert, it's not gonna catch fire or do anything. Some guys like to use nitrogen to put into the system because it's not flammable, you're not pumping air into it. I've never seen an issue with that, just using shop air. This uses shop air from the factory. So you get the code, a check engine light that says minor or small EVAP leak. Sometimes it'll actually have a light on some vehicles for gas cap. This gas cap has to seal those vapors the EVAP system can't do its job and contain the vapors if your gas cap leaks them all out into the atmosphere. And again, your computer will know when that happens. And typically, it's a gas cap if it's the small leak. There's, there's a little valve inside of here. It's not just a solid piece of plastic. This allows air to be drawn in, but vapors not to get out. Here in a minute, we're going to see smoke coming out of this fuel tank here and we're going to know that that's full of smoke inside of there. If you have your cap on and nice and tight and smoke is still billowing out, it's a no-brainer. Your cap is shot. Now while that, while that fills up, if we had this vehicle on a lift, we could trace all along the EVAP lines, along the frame, all the way up to the engine and all the way back and look for tiny little wisps of smoke. And that's where we know there's the leak. So I didn't think there was anything wrong with this vehicle and we have some bad news for Crazy D. His check engine light's been on for a long time. He just never looked into it. He doesn't care. There should be tons of smoke coming out of here and there is some. It's a very small amount. But I just peeked under the car and I seen his charcoal canister is cracked. Let's take a look guys. This is what you would see and you would go, oh my god, there it is. See all that smoke? Just billowing out like a forest fire. It's all coming from his charcoal canister. It's cracked. I just looked up in there. There's his EVAP leak. This is where I could get a price together, get an estimate together, and get with a customer and say, this is what's wrong. This is why your check engine light's on. This is what it's going to cost to fix it. So that's how you check the EVAP system and find leaks with that. Now we're going to show you how to hook it up to an intake manifold and use it to check for leaks there. But for, before we do that, we're going to put our Schrader valve back in the EVAP service port. And remember what I said about the threads being backwards. We're going to tighten it by going the Lucy direction. Lefty Lucy is actually tightened on this. There we go. So if you have a suspected intake gasket leak and you're concerned, and you're like, how do I even find out if it's leaking or not? I can't just look at it and see. This is where this tool, again, makes it black and white, totally gives the answer, and I can get an estimate together and know that that's what it's going to take to fix it. If you have lean coats or it's idling rough, misfiring, it very likely could be intake gaskets, especially on an LS-based motor. When they're cold, they run rough, might even have check engine light for lean running condition. And this is how you find out. You unhook a vacuum line. You just find you a little piece of hose you have laying around, or you could purchase a piece of hose, I guess. 
but you want it to fit tight on the on the port otherwise you'll have smoke coming out of there these have a pointed tip that fits just about any a piece of hose or or whatever and it stays there it's a little wet from the oil vapor that's been collecting on it but now we got that hooked in it's going to pump the intake full of smoke just like it did the evap system that we just tested if there's any leaks or bro broken vacuum lines or anything like that you're going to start seeing the wisps of smoke now it is going to have smoke come out your your air filter area that's normal if you see smoke coming out that way don't be alarmed if you want you can take the the ductwork off and plug it so it doesn't fool you but I, I never mess with that but without too much trouble you can really track down some intake leaks with this let's turn it on let's say it was running rough and we suspect a vacuum leak or something of that nature you let it fill the intake up it takes probably a minute and what you'll do is you'll look where the intake manifold actually bolts to the cylinder heads like you can see through here you start looking for wisps of smoke we're seeing one there that's normal that's from the idle air control valve look at this I did this on purpose so you could see see the smoke if that would have been a cracked vacuum line or something of that nature we'd have our answer problem solved but like I said go along the intake manifold where it mounts to the cylinder heads check all these like on this it has plastic vacuum lines all over the place check those and very likely you'll see like we have here a nice stream of smoke let's go ahead and fix it for them there we go so let me turn that off there are tons of other uses for this tool you can check you could check an air conditioning system if you wanted to if you evacuated it and had it opened up but uh, I typically use this for evap systems and vacuum leaks that's pretty much all I use it for and as you can see it takes an hour or two of guesswork and turns it into 10 minutes of absolute answers Hey, Car Wizard, do they have to buy the Snap-on version? No. They sell much cheaper brands than this. I will put some of these in my affiliate page, not the Snap-on version. That is, in essence, the use of a smoke machine, how you hook it up, what you can do with it, and the answers you can acquire by using it. So let's move on to the next tool. We're going to use this same vehicle. It's called an Amp Hound. Let me grab that for you guys. Here's another tool that's going to be on my Amazon Affiliates page. I don't really know who makes it, but it's called the Amp Hound. It doesn't really say a company or a brand. I think I paid $70 or $80 for this thing. But it is an absolute time saver. I wouldn't run my shop without it. And here's the scenario that you use this tool. You park your car overnight, or over a few nights, and it doesn't start again. You just let it sit and you keep coming out to a dead battery. Something is draining your car. What could it be? Who knows? There's like 40, 50, 60 different circuits on a car. Could it be a bad alternator? Could it be your radio, your CD changer's not shutting off? Could it be a module in the car that's not shutting off? What is it? In today's cars, with so many different com computers and electronics and modules and things inside the car, you could literally spend days finding it. I have had people bring their vehicles to my shop with the same scenario. They say, Car Wizard, I've spent all week trying to find this, and I just can't do it. Finally, they realize the cost that's going to be involved in finding this issue is well worth it because they don't have days and days and days to track down a small, tiny little battery drain. This little guy right here can turn five days worth of tracking down into 10 minutes. It's just that fast. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. What you use is your fuse box. 
All the circuits in your car are going to run through a fuse somewhere. When you turn your car off, most of the fuses should be dead, especially after you let it sit for a couple of hours so that all the modules in your car go to sleep. There really shouldn't be anything going on more than a quarter of an amp, tenth of an amp some, on most fuses. As you can see, this kit comes with various different sizes, maxi fuse, standard fuse, mini fuse. It just fits right over the fuse. We're going to show you guys how this thing works. I've got the fuse box open. I've got it turned on. Let me go turn on the key just to give you an idea. So you can hear the blower motor blowing. I'm not too concerned about that. I'm just going to show you. Every fuse that's a maxi fuse, a standard fuse, or a mini fuse, if you look closely at the fuse, there's little metal dots. Those are get to gain you direct access into testing. If you were to take a piece of wire and touch those two, the power would actually go through the wire. All of these style of fuses have this. And this tool exploits that fact. Do you see the tiny little needle tips on here? We're going to go through each and every fuse. Now I have the car on. It's going to show some amps, but I want you to see what it shows or what it does. Let's try this fuse right here. It doesn't show anything going through that one. Whatever that fuse does must not be turned on at the moment. Let's try another one. It's hard to see. There we have two 0.02 amps being pulled. That really wouldn't be a concern with me with the key off. That's, that's not a whole lot. There we have a tenth of an amp. That might be something I look into. Let's try another one. You hear the single beep? That means it didn't find anything there. Nothing worth talking about. <clears throat> now we'll try this point, this 15 amp fuse. Boom. That's almost half an amp. I know for, through experience that that's probably a, a bulb, like a parking lamp bulb or something. Those usually pull 0.250, a quarter of an amp. That's more than a, a, light, a small light bulb. So if I have the car off, and it's been sitting for a few hours, everything is shut down, and I go through and I find a, bi a big draw, 0.36 or 0.5 or even a full amp, you found it. Nothing in the fuse box should be pulling that kind of power with the key off. The factory wouldn't have that happen because it will kill your battery in a day or two. Everything should be 0.01, 0.02, somewhere around in that range. If, if you see that, it's probably not the issue. But when you come across one with this tool, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 1 1.5, something along that nature, you have found where the draw is. Then you look up online or in your service manual, what is on that circuit? Is, is it parking lamps? Is it power seats? Is it the radio? From there, you can go to only those items and deduce exactly what's going on. They say, well, this is the radio fuse, so I'll go unplug the radio. Now you come back to that fuse again and check it again, and if that draw is gone, boom, you found it, a bad radio. So I've actually had this scenario before where someone pays me $100. I'm not gonna do this for 20 bucks, guys. This is gonna be a, a job that is gonna Without this tool, it could be three or $400 diagnosis. It can take hours to find this. I'm gonna charge probably $100 to use this tool on your car. And I charged the guy $100 to find out that the little light bulb in his trunk, it was never turning off. That's all it was. He's like, oh, well, I could have checked that. Well, yeah, you could have, but you didn't. You asked me to find it for you. And it took me an hour. I went through every single circuit and did this whole test just like we're doing, and I found that on that fuse, I unplugged that bulb and the draw went away. That's all it was. So check those things before you take it to a shop. But this is an amazing tool. When, I, when it was pitched to me to buy this and sh they showed me how to use this, I only paid 80 bucks for this, but I don't care if it was 500 bucks. I would have bought it, hands down. Not only does it save you money, it saves me time. I don't want to be 
under your hood for seven hours trying to find that you, a light bulb that's left on, and neither do you. So this is well worth its weight in gold, more than that really. So I have one more tool to show you. We're going to move to a different car. The last tool I want to show you guys is a thermal imager, a little thermal camera. This one's a cheaper model. They make some of these that are way high expensive, two, three, four grand. I can get the work that I need done with the much cheaper tool, so that's what I went with. But as you can see, you can see my hand shows up orange. You can use this tool for so much on a car. Today I'm going to show you how you can find a misfire, which cylinder it is, by just looking at the exhaust manifold. I have purposely unplugged one of the spark plug wires on this car. This car, by the way, is, is Hoovy's. This, is his, this was his grandma's car. This is Zippy. It's been in here for a while, and it needs some work, but Hoovy has told me, I want my other cars fixed. This one can sit. So with his guidance, I'm letting it sit. Like I said, exhaust manifold you can check for a misfire. If you have one of the tubes in your condenser that's plugged, you can use this tool to figure out which one it is. If you have your radiator you think might be plugged, you can use this tool to find out half of it's orange, the other half is blue. I mean, it won't be that dis distinct, but you'll know, okay, I've looked through this and I can see the radiator is partially plugged up. I'm going to go ahead and start the car. I'm going to let it warm up for a minute. We're going to look at the exhaust manifold with this camera. So we got the engine running. We can hear that it's misfiring. But what if everything's hooked up properly and the question is, well, which cylinder is misfiring? This is just little camera. You can shine it real fast and get the answer. Let's take a look. So you can see the orange right there is the very back cylinder on the exhaust manifold. There's the third one from the back. There's the second one from the back. Let's, you can see actually see the heat on the exhaust manifold there. And I've unplugged the forward cylinder. Let's look at the exhaust manifold there. Look guys, it's blue. Ice cold. And if we compare it to the others, orange. No more questions, guys. I exactly know what cylinder is misfiring. No more questions. That's the kind of tools that I like to use. It takes 20 questions and turns it into one question, one answer. So now I'm going to turn it off, plug, it, plug the spark plug back in, and when we turn on the AC, we're going to show you guys how that works. So now we can hear it's running a lot better. I plug the spark plug wire back in. But we're going to use this camera now to look at the condenser up front. Maybe we're thinking that it might be partially plugged. We can take a look at that with this camera. So you think your AC's on, you're looking for cold lines. You're not, you're looking for hot. The condenser gets hot. It takes the heat out of the Freon. Look, we can see that little high, high uh, this is a high side line. You can see it's orange. That's hot Freon. And it's going into the condenser, which is fairly cool right now because it's cold in the shop. But look at that. That orange scattering is the heat that's actually in the condenser. On a hot day, you would like to see that orange color across the whole condenser. But if you get to an area where it's blue, see, we can see the heat now. There's the orange color. So using this tool, I was able to look at the condenser and it had a nice orange pattern across the entire condenser. I know that it's a good condenser. If I seen the bottom section of it was still cold, or maybe one or two of the tubes are still cold, but it was orange up above there, then I know this, this is plugged, and I would start asking the question, why is it plugged? Has it been damaged, or is the compressor damaged, or something of that nature? So this little tool is really handy. I think I paid two or $300 for this thing, and it was well worth it. Just like I said a minute ago, this is one of those tools that divides yes and no. No more questions. We were able to see which cylinder is misfiring. We were able to see if the condenser is partially plugged. You can also use this on a radiator. I've actually heard of people using this to look for leaks on like the seal around your door. You're driving down the road and you keep hearing wind noise through, through the gasket that's on your door. 
on a cold day like today, you could turn your heat on, full blast, full heat, and just go around the door with this camera, and you'll see heat seeping out, and you'll say, aha, there it is. Very handy tool, guys. We'll put this on the Amazon Affiliates page. After you've been working on cars for a while and you start to get the gist of how things work, these are the tools that take you to the next level. And a customer brings in a car and you get definite, absolute answers. And the customer's amazed. They're like, how did you find that so fast? These tools are how you find it so fast. We'll have this and we'll also have the Amp Hound on our Amazon affiliate page. And we'll also, we'll put a smoke machine on there, a, a little less expensive one. In case you guys are running a shop or something, you might be interested in that. So thanks for following along. I was just actually using some of these tools today and I thought, I bet the Car Wizard fans would like to actually see these, these tools, how they work and what they can do. So if you're interested in what kind of other tools I use or you wanna check these tools out, check the Amazon affiliates page with the link below. We also have merchandise for sale. And if you haven't, click the subscribe button. Go ahead and hit that and the little bell. We got many more cool videos coming, guys. It just keeps getting better. So thanks for watching. See you next time.